And now to discuss this further with me now in studio is Aran Peleg, Chief Investment Officer at Clarity Capital. Thank you very much for joining me for this. Pleasure to be here. Well, of course, as we've just seen in the report, a major political uh, occurrence in Italy. Uh, the referendum was uh, voted on no by the people, um, according to everyone's predictions, uh, except maybe the prime minister. But still, markets did not respond very negatively to this. Why did, they not, uh, did we not see a more dramatic response? So um, I, I think it's, it's not that the event wasn't uh, significant. It was significant. But I think in contrast to uh, what we had with the uh, Brexit vote and what we had with the US elections just uh, recently, this was very much an, an expected outcome. And you know, with financial markets, the way they work is you know, if, if people are expecting a certain outcome, it's al it was already previously uh, re reflected in market prices. And therefore, when it actually happened, there was very little uh, reaction. And you're mentioning, of course, Brexit and the U.S. elections. Uh, Trump won, and that's again uh, according to uh, very little people's predictions that he would win. A very surprising win there. Uh, the Brexit vote was also a surprise uh, outcome for many. And uh, it seems, though, that uh, it ties into this story that we're talking about uh, today, the Italian referendum, politics becoming a bigger and bigger part of what drives markets. Uh, I imagine that to some extent this has always been the case, but is it true that we're seeing this uh, to a greater extent these days? I think so. Um, as you say, politics always have been in the background. Um, you know, it's very difficult to disentangle politics from economics at the end of the day. But um, I think that what's happening now is that the changes that we're seeing or the developments that we're seeing on the poli pol political side and geopolitical side are just much more significant, in my view, than what we've seen in recent years. I mean, really, if you think back, I mean, uh, at least uh, since the end of the Cold War, let's say in the fall of the uh, Berlin Wall, 1989, and perhaps even all the way back to World War, War II, we've been in a fairly stable geopolitical environment. And, um, and the way things are going now are potentially pulling us in a completely different direction, which is why I think it's becoming, you know, markets are becoming much more focused on this than uh, in recent years. And trying to look forward uh, and ahead to what might happen, it may be impossible to try and guess with all these uh, surprise uh, outcomes that we're seeing throughout Europe and the U.S. But do you expect polit the politics to continue to be a major factor in what uh, dictates economic policies uh, around the world? I think so. The, the way it seems at the moment, definitely. Um, there's a clear global trend that we're seeing. It's a trend towards uh, there's more social economic tensions within developed market you know, countries, um, maybe as a product of a very long kind of long term trend of uh, globalization that we've seen over the last you know, decades. And now there's some reaction to the, you know, the, what the results have been, which is to some extent in inequality, for example, in income within developed markets, but you know, other issues as well. Um, and we're seeing the rise of nationalistic uh, governments around the world. I mean, whether it's you know, in recent years, I mean, you can look at Asia, Japan, um, India, uh, Europe. You know, we've, uh, you know, we're seeing this uh, maybe now the the strengthening of the Eurosceptic uh, parties or movements in, in in many different countries. In the U.S., uh, Trump, the Brexit vote. So. Um, as, as these nationalistic powers take, uh, you know, take power in these different countries, um, there's also a risk that we'll see increasing geopolitical tensions between countries as well. And uh, to me, all this is not a good recipe for stability, and which is, is, is negative for financial markets. It's increasingly becoming a risk, I think, and people will increasingly take this into account. So for now, we're not seeing a very dramatic uh, a response uh, within the markets, also in the U.S. after Trump and also in Italy. But as you say, this might uh, take a while before we really see long-term effects. Uh, Iran Pelig, thank you very much for joining me for this thank insight you. today. <laughs>